now that we're in VR, I wanted to really quickly touch on uh, some of the, the, the UI. So as you can see, it's just an empty space in our model and our controllers. Uh, so to incite the UI, just like uh, if anyone's used Medium before, um, you know, the lower button on your quest, I don't want to get too specific about where is what, because again, this is not that type of uh, demo. There's uh, a lot of really awesome tutorials uh, in, on, our, on our website about Modeler and all the features. So uh, this mimics exactly what you saw on desktop um, being the main menu. You know, you go to clay, the clay tool, you have all the similar uh, elements, the similar primitives with all their parametric uh, controls. And then on my thumbstick on this, this uh, right controller, I, if I move left and right, it's just a page flip between this and then the actions menu, which is the right click equivalent. Um, so that's essentially it. You know, uh, on the actions, we have new layers and resolution, symmetry, all that stuff. But what I really want to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and select everything here with a frog and I'm going to group it. So. Group it. Maybe a bit of a uh, side here, because that's we're going to switch over to kind of more of a lecture based, and then and then later on after this, I'm going to attempt to do something from scratch. So a little scary, but uh, we'll we'll see if that if I if I come up with either mashed potato or something um, decent, right? But I want to touch on my philosophy of hierarchy. Hierarchy. It's always hard to pronounce hierarchy of forms whenever I sculpt. And it could be sculpting anything in Modeler, ZBrush, Clay, wherever. It's the same constant philosophy that I apply in, in everything that I do with Modeler. Um, and hierarchy of forms really is, you know, it consists of primary, secondary, and tertiary shapes, right? So when we're looking at this, uh, this, this frog-like creature, say you know i'm i'm building it from scratch i'm thinking about what the primary shape is of this this frog right so looking at looking at i mean cheating obviously because it's already there but you know like looking at the head maybe it's an egg always i'm always thinking of simple shapes right so body let's let's say also an egg so i'm going to create a new layer and this is highlighting the speed in which you can create things in modeler so i now have two layers i can i can place maybe scale up and down you know oops i'm gonna increase the head a little bit with warp so for the eyes new layer um let's go with these sort of capsule like things let's add like an orb for the mouth I'm just going fairly quickly and, you know, not really focusing too much on uh, being too specific. So strength. And then I'm, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm just essentially selecting each layer. Just like medium for medium users who have uh, used that app. So I'm just quickly blocking in these, the primary shapes that compose the readability of this creature's uh, structure. You know, shapes that from afar I can go, okay, that that's that those are the primary shapes that create that that creature. Just like say when we look at people's faces, what are the primary shapes? You know, the cheekbone, the brow, that create the the readability or the the features of a person. It's so it's like doing a thumbnail you know, just, a thumbnail in concept art or is it different? Yeah, it's essentially the because hmm. thumbnails you're 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 really trying to focus on like what what are the main point mm -hmm. shapes that 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 creature or character has right um so exactly it's it's essentially the the, the thumbnail right so but which shapes for me so i'm just creating new shapes really quickly so just you know and then for the arm, I'm gonna switch off symmetry, and I'll and you'll see why later. Um, so, got this new layer. You have this. 
the layer. Let's go with an egg for the, the hand. And for the fingers, I want to show this uh, this feature we have called um, link uh, duplicate. Uh, so I'm just going to block in the fingers really quick. So new layer. Let's increase the resolution there. Copy that. Copy that. And then from here, I'm going to group it. And what I'll do is I'm going to switch to make link on this particular group. So I'm going to copy that once, twice, and another. And for the thumb, I'm going to get rid of the, the digit here. Oops. Actually, I'll just leave it. Forgot. I'll just embed it there. So what link copy does is now when we're, you know, say refining, say we're in secondary shape land, I just wanted to kind of illustrate it here right now. When I start refining one digit, it applies it to all of them. So this is really useful for things like fingers or repeated elements, or appendages, tentacles, you know, on a creature, because then you can just work on a master uh, finger or a tentacle or whatever, and it applies it to uh, a lot of the others. And then from here, you know, you can individually, you know, pose it with, you know, the groups, scale it, but it will still, whatever I do here, will propagate through. So anyway, so say, oops, uh, I put that on the same layer. I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of that for now. So I'm going to select this. And I'm going to do a uh, mirror repetition. So with this, we can Please don't mind the back here. I don't want to like correct that because of time, but imagine that, that we didn't have that. You know, I could I could pose this using the 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 link um, kind of copy that, that I just did there. So anyway, you know, the so that that's my process in, in terms of building up the primary shapes, and then let's get rid of that really quick. And then from there, once I'm ready for a uh, like sort of a more detailed secondary shape pass, let's put some eyes in here. And uh, duplicate this uh, this head. You know, I'm, I'm starting to kind of really think about what. Okay, since the primary shapes are there what is now the design you know i'm starting to think about like okay well maybe the this orb right here can be the the beginnings of a mouth right and then let's just get, go a little bit more specific with the egg shape for the head that we had earlier you know maybe um let's duplicate that maybe there's like a fatty part here and then this as it terminates on the body, you know, there's like a bulge that that happens here. And then on the body, let's duplicate that again. So I'm, this duplicate method is really, you know, when I discovered it, it's like, wow, it's a very fast way of adding forms because I'm dealing with intersecting shapes and really that's what I want at this point. Everything is in a, on a separate layer, and it's it's great because it's very non-destructive. You know, I can, as you'll see soon. Let me just add some some pectoralis uh, goodness here. You know, that kind of stuff. As you'll see, as you can see, I'm just like switching from layer to layer before even fusing it and designing that way versus, you know, in other apps, more polygonal based apps, <clears throat> you're building off of one surface, right? So you don't have the ability to, to really 
non be non-committal about it, I guess, is uh, what, what I'm trying to say. Like, you can continue to experiment because this is really where the design aspect comes in, you know? And, and as a production artist, you know, using polygonal sculpting tools, it's a very different way of working because typically we want to see everything fused together in, in, in sort of this more organic way, but looking at things geometrically like this as, as shapes really is a, a, a very foundational skill when it comes to sculpting. And I'm, I'm guessing other disciplines like, you know, painting as well, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a, I don't paint, but, I would imagine it's the same exact concepts of um, using shapes as a way to to really nail down your design. You know, making sure that those shapes are clean, they're awesome. And then from there, once um, once you're happy with, which I'm not really happy with this right now, you can merge it and start making it look organic. And you know, that's what I did did for the frog here. Um, so yeah, that that's essentially, and and you know, to get to this point where you have this now kind of like a puppet doll, uh, primary form version of a creature, it was so easy for me to to do it in Modeler, you know, just through the layer system, and then from here, I'm just refining, merging, and and adding shapes to there. So with that in mind, you know, that that's that's sort of the flow that I have. I'm going to now remove the safety net. <laughs> An attempt to uh, to to create something, you know, put 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 my money where my mouth is, and really communicate just how easy it is for modeler to catch up with any any ideas that I have in my head on the fly as we're building it. So that's what I'm going to attempt. Do you think you are so more gonna... productive using VR than the desktop application, even with just modeler? Do you think there is a difference when you scale something in VR or scale something? There's a I find in 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 my you know long time use of of, of a modeler so far <clears throat> there there's a delineation between VR and desktop um, I'm very much productive with primary to secondary to a bit sometimes tertiary but then when it comes to surface detailing I always switch to desktop um, and I'll show that later uh, that that sort of uh, Oh, when 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 does Geo go to desktop versus mm. VR? Uh, but but in the beginning stages, I definitely am a lot more productive in, in VR for sure. 